Welcome back to the channel Glitter Witches. Today we are going to be talking all things candle magic. We're going to be doing some oils, some herbs. We're going to be talking about different kinds of candles. We have all kinds here um, and we're going to carve. We're just going to have a good old time. Now I do want to preface, this is just the way that I do things. So if you don't like how I do it, that's fine, but this is me and how I do it. So there's no need to get into arguments about it. But we're going to talk about candle magic. A couple of people have asked me how I dress candles with oils or with herbs. How do you use the different kinds of candles for different sorts of workings? So I figured we'd just make a whole video. We talk about the whole thing. We'll hang out. We'll prepare a little something and we'll just have a good time. So if you're interested in that kind of video, let's get started. Now, before we get started into the whole enchilada of it all, anytime you're doing any kind of working, I talked about this in my video about the six reasons why your spells may not be working, is you need to be clear about what you're wanting to do, okay? So that's the most important thing, whether it's candle magic or not. So you wanna take your time and you wanna make sure you pick the thing that is going to connect and is gonna align with your intentions the best. Now, many people have many different variations of everything that I'm about to do. The first thing that I'm going to say for me, when it comes to colors, the number one thing that I always use is white, white or black, but typically white. So we have a couple of examples here. Now, there is a book that you can get where it talks heavily about correspondence. If you want to have kind of an encompassing, a big encompassing book that'll kind of help you coordinate everything, I do have a book recommendation for that. So book recommendations before we get into it. The first one is just about candle magic in general, which I think is really good. And it is the book of candle magic. This is a really great book. Good reference points, great ideas, talks about different shapes of candles, reading smoke, reading wax, the whole nine, okay? Really, really interesting. If you're looking for correspondences, this is a great book by Llewellyn. Complete book of correspondences. We go over, not we, this isn't my book, but it goes over herbs, animals, colors, everything you may need. So if you're just starting off or you're lazy like me, this could be a good addition and preparation for spell work. Now that the book recommendation is out of the way, let's get into candle magic. The first thing I want to talk about is the different types of candles that you can use. The easiest and I think most accessible is going to be the tea light. Now you can do a number of different things with a tea light candle. You can dress it, you can put herbs on here, light it. The most important thing and I've said this already and I'm going to say it again, the most important part of any sort of working is your intention, being clear, okay? So if that means holding the candle in your hand for a few moments, a few seconds, a few minutes, whatever it is, it's really important that you do that. You want to imbue the object with everything that you're trying to accomplish. You want the working to have a sense of clarity about what it's supposed to do. A lot of people start off with this and then kind of forget about tea lights because we have all the other pretty things. Granted, don't, you know, you're, you're not going to get anything huge or great out of this, but it's definitely a good starting point. And I use tea lights a lot on the altar, specifically if I'm doing a money spell or protection. I will dress these with uh, protective oil. My favorite is Art of the Root, Fire Wall of Protection. I love this oil. I will literally just dress it and I will say, come to me protection, come to me my shield, stop all negativity. And I'll just repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. And I'll lay them all around the altar. I light them up before I even do my actual protection spell. I'll even do this if I'm doing any kind of baneful magic. <laughs> I will do the same thing. So tea lights are always helpful. Don't feel like you have to go get this to do candle magic. You you don't have to. Tea lights are great too. Um, this is from the Dollar Tree. 
these kind of candles work as well. Um, I love, these are my favorite. These are the emergency candles from, I think, the Dollar General. I think these are absolutely fabulous. We also have different shapes. This one was made by the Sunshine State Witch. It's beautiful, it's glittery, it has all the goods. You still dress this, okay? You still set your intentions in here. We have a middle finger candle here that Brittany made as well. We also have a figurine and we have our famous seven day candle. Depending on what book you read, you'll get a lot of suggestions on what kind of candle you should use, what color you should use. The most important thing is you follow what feels right for you. If doing a prosperity spell resonates with a brown candle, then use it. A lot of people will tell you black is universal, white is universal, pink is universal. Do what resonates with you. And I say that because if you look at this white candle and it has a sexual energy to you, white is the color of semen and that's why you want to use it, that helps set your intention. It helps with your own clarity and therefore there'll be more clarity in the working when you actually set it on fire and let and release. So it's very, very important that you do follow intuition. Granted, yes, when you're doing any sort of working, candle working, you want to be able to use whatever spells, whatever spells, whatever oils, whatever herbs you have that correspond with that intention. It helps build that magic. But first and foremost, you have to follow your intention. So that, that's very important. The other important thing is that you follow your pocketbook. You know, it's, it's nice to have all the glittery, shiny stuff, but you know, pandemic is real. Recession is real. You don't need to break the bank to practice magic. So let's go over a couple of different ways to fix, dress, and get the magic flowing. Let's go over a couple of examples with different candles. Now I will be the first one to tell you I do it differently almost every single time. So I kind of just go with whatever feels naturally to me in that moment. So if I feel like I'm going to carve, I'll carve. If I don't, then I don't. So I will show you one that I have used multiple times. One of the few things that I've used multiple times. This white candle. If I'm going to do a prosperity spell, money, 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 money. I want my money, right? Give me my money. I will use, I have some money drawing oil, which is great. You can also use petition paper. So I kind of do the most. I have some bay leaf here as well. My number, my favorite number in the world is the number five. I'm not big into numerology most of the time, but anytime I feel like I want it to have some power, I always go with the number five because it just feels right to me. So we're gonna go with five bay leaves. So what I would do is hold the candle. And just like I've said before, if I'm wanting a specific thing, a specific amount of money, I'm going to tell it a specific amount of money. I'm not just going to say, I need money. No, I, I don't want no 50 cents. I need what I need. So I'm going to do what I need to do. Now, if you have bigger bay leaves, you can actually write on these bay leaves. And in the moment, while you're putting this together, you're going to think about what you're wanting. So as you can see here, this is the type of candle that I typically do for this working because it has the four points. I have one bay leaf, as you can see, I'm checking my viewfinder to make sure you can see this. I have the bay leaf in the middle and I have four to correspond with the corners. I'll take my oil and I will dress each candle. Now, if you want to write on these, on these leaves, do that. Absolutely. You want to correspond? Let's correspond to Helen back. If you're going to write on it, get a green Sharpie, right? Say I want $500. I'm going to write $500 now ASAP. And then like Miss Alemi says in her video, you always say thank you. I never did that before, but it's such a fantastic idea. So we're gonna put that there. Put our little leaves, our little bay leaves here. We're gonna set that there. 
Now, when I dress a candle like this, I don't get all fancy with it. What I do in my oil, I literally shake it up. Oh, went a little crazy there. And just like that, I'll say my prayers, say everything that I need to say, and I light that bitch up, light that bitch on fire. So that's one example of what you can do. It's simple. It doesn't need to be complicated, okay? This is a little messy, a little simple. We're not going crazy. We're not breaking the bank. This whole thing probably costs $2, this whole situation here. Very, very, very doable. I moved my little money candle over to the altar over here. We have that lit up. I said all my little prayers. <laughs> so now we are going to look at some more examples. I think somebody was asking about a taper candle. Same idea. Now, suggestions. Some people say if you want to pull something towards you, you pull it towards uh, the wick, pull it away, you pull it down, pull it down towards the bottom. I don't always do it the same. If I'm wanting to remove something or I'm wanting to break something, a relationship or a habit. I usually, the only, this is the only thing I do every time. I will start in the middle and pull both ways. Just like that. And envision whatever it is that I'm trying to break apart or tear apart or break down, that I'm breaking that bitch down. I'm breaking her down. He is not going to fuck with me anymore. I can't. I can't. I got to stop chasing this boy. Whatever it is, okay? So, let's see here. Let's do... Let's show an example of a road opener. <clears throat> a little road opener oil. Put it on your finger. I'm not going to waste it all. And you're just going to pull it towards you. You're going to imbue it with that energy, with that intention of what you're wanting. Super simple, super easy. Another great thing about these candles in particular is they're great with petitions and great with carvings. Now, I don't have a knife, but I do have a porcupine quill. So if you're wanting whatever, protection, you carve it right into this candle. And I'm just gonna carve in this candle right here. Protect me. Okay, we're gonna do it three times. And while you're doing this, think about what that looks like, what you're wanting protection from. Okay, and that's what you're going to want to think about the whole time you're doing this. Protect me. Protect me. I'm going to fall into old habits and I'm going to do it five times. It's just a habit now. Protect me. Protect me. Right? You can't really see it. Protect me. You take your petition paper, you want to bring it, bring protection towards you, fold it towards you. You want to do it away, do it away. Whatever is going to help with your intention, right? You can do it just like that. Done. Light the bitch up. You're done. You want to be a little extra? We can take some fiery wall of protection. And put some in my hands. Protect me. Protect me. This is just what I would vocalize. I'm not going to say my actual prayers and what I actually say because that's private, but you know, you can do that. Protect me. Protect me. Now, we're going to throw that petition to the side. Say, you know what? This is a really dire situation. And I need this protection right now. We're going to use my favorite. We're going to use some coffee. I'm just going to put some on this plate right here. Say your prayers. The technique I typically use is the one that I learned from Hoodoo Delish. I do a lot of conjure and hoodoo looking things in my practice. So, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I bless and activate this candle to protect me from all negativity, from people who are coming from me, from spirits that wish me ill will, whatever it is. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen.
You can add your deities, whatever you need to say. You can bless and activate every herb as you're using it. Activate the oil for protection. Activate the candle separately for protection. Activate the coffee to bring it quickly. That is effective and quick. Here you go. We have a protective candle. You got your herbs, you got your oil, you got your candle, you got your intention. You're all set. Light the bitch. I thought I was just going to be showing examples, but it turns out I'm just <laughs> creating a whole bunch of candles right now. Um, so the one that I got the most questions about was the seven day candle. But before we get to that, things like this, this is a figure candle. Uh, if I was going to use this for protection, to get someone to leave me alone, there are certain things that you can do. You can shove clothes in the eyes. You can gouge out the eyes, X out the mouth. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can do. There's actually ways to bless this and attach this to somebody's soul. Not going to go over that in this video, but there are a lot of things that you can do with figure candles that you can really do with any candle. But these are a really good tool as well. So I just wanted to kind of highlight that. Um, this was made by Brittany. I haven't used this candle yet. I'm saving it for the day that I really, really need it. But figure candles aren't too expensive. And if you know how to make candles, you can buy a mold and start to make them yourself. I'm not that creative, so I just go to my sister for it. But back to the seven day candle. I had questions about how I dress these, how I fix them, how does it all work? So this is what I do personally. I'm gonna grab my porcupine quill. And before I get started again, whatever it is you're wanting, okay? Say you want passion back in your marriage. You, you need some passion, honey. Say you need some fame, you need some fortune, whatever it is, your intention. Again, I always use five holes. I will literally just take this. I'm not gonna actually fix this candle and push it down. When I'm doing this, I'm still thinking about what I'm wanting to use this candle for. Every step of the way, it is important to have absolute clarity in what you're doing and why you're doing it and what the candle is supposed to be doing. So there's that. We're getting wax everywhere, but you know, witchcraft is messy. So you gotta make peace with that. Just like that. I don't know if you can see that or not. But there are five holes. Yeah, you can. There you go. And what's great about that is it's another step that you can use to imbue your intention and clarity into what you're wanting for your working. Another great thing about this is, is when you take your oil, you take your oil, let's use just a regular oil so that I can do what I want to do with this later. Van Van oil, great for an all around, all around uses, right? I will take this just like this and I will drop it in the holes. Say your prayers and your blessings. There you go. Now when you take your herbs, it's important. This is the important part. Try to get as much herb as you can in the holes because if too much of the herb is around the wick, this whole thing can catch on fire and it will explode. Another word of caution. If you're wanting to cleanse your candle ahead of time, which I do suggest you do, if you're going to use Florida water on the outside, which I have done, make sure you bring it up to about here. And when you do, please make sure that you let the candle dry. I had a candle on my altar, I had cleansed it with the Florida water, fixed it, had it all up and ready to go. It was still wet around the rim. When I tell you the candle exploded, it literally exploded in front of me. So just remember, we are working with fire here and you're working with dried herbs and oils, flammable goods. So just remember to be as safe as you possibly can. If you're gonna leave your candle burning unattended, 
you really shouldn't do that. If you do, it needs to be in a fire safe place, like a tub. But realistically, you want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on your candles at all times. Even if it's in case like this, it's, it's always safe to not leave fire unattended. That is my video on candle magic. That's a very basic overview of how to dress, how to fix certain things that you can do. There's a lot of additives. If you look in certain books like the candle magic book that I uh, suggested, that'll show you when you're burning a candle, how the wax falls, you can read where the wax leads whether it's north, south, east, west, has certain meanings. You can read the smoke. Also, what's really interesting with these encased candles is as it burns, this is very important when you're doing a working with a seven day candle, watch the glass as, as it burns, how foggy it gets. If the candle has rings around it, I don't have one here that's already been used. If you're burning any sort of candle, regardless of the intention, and you're seeing fogginess, you're seeing defined rings, that's resistance in the working. So you would have to break down this what you did, your intention, the whole thing, to see why there may be some resistance. You may not really be able to find out why because we don't really fully know a situation completely. We only know our own perception, but that can be an indicant that a the candle's defective or there's some resistance uh, that's stopping the spell from being able to work appropriately. So if you start to see those rings, it's really, really important that you watch that. If you see that in the beginning of the candle and by the time the candle gets down to the bottom, there are no more rings. That's a good sign. If you have rings all the way down, you're probably going to want to repeat that working. Maybe go over what you did, your intentions, the herbs you use, the whole kind of enchilada to see if there's anything you can do to improve on the working. But that's the good thing about these encased candles. Reading that wax and reading the glass will kind of give you an indication of how the working is actually going before it's even completed. So you kind of know where you need to go from there. And that is today's video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you lovely glitter witches next time. Bye guys.